<laughs> Welcome everyone. Um, I am Jade from Jones and for Taste and I'm here with Jenny from The Gingered Whisk. Hello. Um, and we're here to talk about three tips to help your kids eat what you eat. Um, we just want to let you know we can see comments so we are happy to answer as you guys um, have any questions and um, but you do need to comment on the live from my page, not from Jenny's. So if you're watching from Jenny's page, click through to the original video so that you can comment there because that's where we'll see them. Um, and we will happily come back and answer questions later too. Um, so if we miss it, we will answer it if we can. So Jenny, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay, I think we're officially live now. Yes, okay, I am Jenny and I run the Ginger Whisk which is a site that's all about raising adventurous eaters through global weeknight cuisine. Um, I have three little girls who are eight and five and nine months old and a former picky eating husband. So I really understand the struggles of trying to get a meal on the dinner in like five seconds and having everybody like it and still enjoy it yourself and not be bored because you have chicken nuggets every meal. So. That's kind of who I am and what I do. Okay, and I'm Jade, and I um, live in Southern California with my husband and my three kids, um, who are nine, six, and almost two. Um, and I've had my own share of fighting picky eaters. All of my kids have had power struggles with me with wanting to not want to try their new things. Um, but I, and my two-year-old is currently in that, like, you don't get to choose what I eat. I get to choose what I eat stage. Um, but their phases um, and my kids now love all sorts of fun things and um, it just takes time, but we're, we're here to help you through. So I think Jenny, you're gonna start with point one. Okay, so um, we're gonna give you three easy tips, right? So the first one is to give them the ability to choose. Um, choice and some ownership in what a kid eats goes a long way. The dinner time is not really a time for power struggles. Um, everyone's tired at the end of the day. We really don't want to like pound it in. Yeah, you want everyone to eat, but giving some kids choice and flexibility in what they eat is really important. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, and Jenny's really good about this, and I am less good about this in some ways um, when it comes to main dishes where um, she's really good about, like, making, like, giving the kids the option to do, like, a soup and then giving them the option to choose toppings or, um, you know, you just had that, um, like, egg muffins where they could customize their own egg muffins. So I tend to just, like, do all the ingredients separately. Um, and then, like, you know, if we're doing burritos or we're doing ramen, then... Um, you know, then they can throw what they want on there. But I do think that having kids have their own ownership of what they get to put in, it means they'll put in things that, I mean, when my kids make their own pizzas, I'm always amazed at how many veggies they put on their pizzas when they won't eat the veggies if I put them on the pizzas. Yeah. Um, which is just, it's silliness. Um, when I think too, starting with familiar foods, like meatballs, meatballs my kids adore. They will eat meatballs all day and night. Um, and so, you know, introducing me meatballs with, new flavors i think is great i mean and you can do so many you can do stock thai style meatballs you can do um oh greek meatballs and um or introducing like new ingredients into the meatballs that's uh, how i've done for the longest time and then one of my kids are like oh i don't want to eat that i'm like well you eat it all the time in the meatballs and they're like oh okay i guess i can i guess i can eat that <laughs> yeah um I think it's another thing, important thing that when you're trying something new to make sure that you have lots of options on their plate. I love the divided plates for like little toddler stages because it helps me to remember to put lots of different things on their plate. So if we're trying a new Indian dish, then I also know that even if they don't eat the Indian food, they might, they will eat the rice and they will eat some naan. And I'll also throw on a veggie and also some fruit so they have lots of options. So if they decide they don't really like that curry that we made, they're still going to have things in their tummies and they won't go to bed super hungry. Yeah, and um, I, I've heard this from multiple experts, uh, you know, who are dietitians and stuff that giving kids one to two options that are available at every meal makes them feel 
like it's okay. And it makes you feel like it's okay. So if they're eating their fruit and they eat some bread and maybe they took a couple bites of meat, they're not going to go hungry. Um, and they're trying the new foods and that's really what's most important. Yeah. Okay, okay. So <laughs> yeah, point two, <laughs> are we ready? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so point two is repeat exposure. Um, don't get discouraged if they hate it the very first time. Um, we have tried so many foods where uh, curry um, is one of those that we make at least once a month. Um, and my kids hated it with a passion the first probably 12 times we ate it. Um, <laughs> like it was, there was crying at the table and it was like, try a bite. Like, you know, there's naan, there's fruit. Um, you can have just a piece of bread if you don't want, you know, you don't want the specific thing. Um, but now they tell me how much they love it and they get so excited and people look at me and like I'm crazy because my kids finally like curry, but it, it took years of introducing curry for them to actually be on board and excited about it. Um, you know, experts say it takes 15 to 20 times of introducing a food to kids before they actually are willing to try it. Um, and, and so that's, it's doable. It sounds crazy, but it's totally doable. And exposure doesn't mean putting it on their plate 15 times. It means actually trying it 15 to 20 times. So don't, again, don't make this a power struggle. Think about how you're serving it. Um, let's talk about like carrots. If you're trying carrots, there are so many different ways to prepare carrots. You can serve them raw. You can serve them raw whole. You can serve them raw cut into coins. You can serve them raw sliced lengthwise. You could also shred them. You can spiralize them. You can steam them. You can grill them. You can roast them. There are like a bajillion ways that you can cook carrots. You can put them in something. Um, it just goes on and on and on. So all of those help exposure. Maybe they like the texture different another way, or they like the flavor of it roasted a different way. Maybe they like it paired with cinnamon more than they like it paired with cumin. Um, it's really all about experimentation here. So just keep trying it in different ways and you'll find something that works. Yeah, and my kids are, I have one kid, you know, if we talk about carrots, I have one kid who likes them, raw and one kid who likes them cooked um <laughs> and so of course it makes it hard you know so it's it's the sometimes we're gonna have it cooked and sometimes we're gonna have it raw and that's okay it's it'll take time and it may not be until adulthood where they're willing to eat them all i hated all tomatoes until after i had my first child yeah. um <laughs> the first time i ever had asparagus i had it boiled at a friend's house like in a pan with water and boiled and it tasted like grass and I hated it. And I thought I hated asparagus until I became an adult and I tried it roasted. And I was like, Oh, this doesn't taste like hay. <laughs> so yeah, just cook it differently. Try it differently. Um, different ways of cooking changes its texture and its flavor. So don't give up. Just keep trying. Yeah. Well, and I think having like an established routine um, of what your family, deems acceptable for trying foods. Um, you know, for some families that might be, you try one bite and it has to be a teeny tiny bite because that's really all that your child really will accept as an acceptable solution. Yeah. And that's okay. Um, for my kids, as because we've already been doing this for their whole lives, we have them, they have to take the number of bites however old they are. Oh. Um, and sometimes that's really brutal for my six year old, um, especially because he's turning seven. And so he's very scared about like, I have to take seven bites. Oh. Um, but you know, my nine year old who used to be my pickiest eater just kind of accepts it and she'll eat nine. And then she's like, I'll finish it. Like there's only three bites left. And so she'll finish it. Um, so, you know, you have to figure out what works for, for you. And we have a one bite rule. So you have to have a bite, not a nibble, not a lick, a bite. But <laughs> I know there are other families who have like sensory issues where a lick is fine for them. So I think you really have to think about who your children are and what their personalities are and how you can push them a little bit without crossing that line. So it's definitely like a family by family situation. Yeah, you know, and I have friends who have sensory issues, um, their kids do, and and her husband does as well. And like, 
they would starve rather than eat. And obviously yeah. forcing them to eat seven bites is never an okay yeah. thing for their family. And that's totally okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, you know, when getting kids to try new foods, I have been so amazed at how much exposing them through other mediums um, helps them. So my kids, I would make a dish, like say I make Greek meatballs, they will not touch them. We watch a TV show like Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives where they make Greek meatballs. And my kids are like, hey mama, can we make that? And I'm just like, I'm going to hurt you. Like, yes, we can. let's go make Greek meatballs. Greek meatballs right now, but I totally did that like two months ago and you wouldn't touch them at all. Um, so, you know, it's, <laughs> it's funny, but there's lots of really cool shows out there. Um, one of our current favorites is Somebody Feed Phil, where um, it's the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond and he goes out and he travels to all these different places and tries all sorts of foods. And my kids have been so excited to try all these new foods that I didn't think they would ever be interested in trying. Yeah, there are a lot of really fun books out there too that are about kids. Um, we just read one the other day called How to Feed Your Parents, I think it was what it was oh. called. And it's about a little girl who wants to try all these other foods, but her parents only want pizza and mac and cheese. And so she starts cooking herself and discovers, it teaches her parents how to love quiche. And then there's a recipe at the end of the book for quiche. And do you know what my five-year-old asked to make for dinner that night? It was quiche. <laughs> so there are so many good books out there that help introduce new foods. Um, just ask your librarian or go to the bookstore. And they're, they have books that have recipes like right in the back of them. And yeah, books, movies, podcasts, um, even princesses. My daughters love princesses. And I actually developed a whole line of recipes because my, she was then four, loved frozen. She didn't want to eat Swedish meatballs one night, but I told her, you know what? This is Anna and Elsa's favorite meal. They eat this all <laughs> the time. And she was like, no way. And you can <laughs> eat all of the meatballs on her plate and ask for seconds. So I developed a whole line of recipes based on all the Disney princesses. And they're suddenly like, they think it's amazing because it's what someone else would have eaten. A tiny bit of peer pressure, but it totally works. <laughs> you know, kids are funny that way. Um, I mean, I I feel like it has to come from sometimes somebody else. It's like when you tell your kid a hundred times to do something, they won't do it. Their teacher tells them once and they're like, oh, well, I'm going to do it now. And you're like, really? It's a rule. Well, <laughs> it's Swanson said. <laughs> yes. Kids. <laughs> Yeah. We love them. They drive us crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the third tip that we like is to invite your children to help you prepare the food. Um, this goes back to the ownership of it. The more involved they are, the more likely they are to try it. So have them help you pick what meal you're going to have. Even if it's pizza or mac and cheese, that's fine. As long as they're taking an ownership in what they're having. Um, then have them go to the store with you and help pick things out. And you can say things like, hey, let's find five red apples. Or can we find three different green fruits to eat this week? Or, you know, like, let's just pick out these ingredients that we need. Then they're exposed to it from the beginning. And then they can help you prepare them at home and they help you cook it. When they do all those things, they're like, I picked this recipe, I got the things at the store, I helped make it, and now I'm gonna eat it because I'm super excited about it. So just getting them in there as much as possible is really important. Yeah, well, and I like to do sometimes, I don't generally take my kids shopping, but sometimes I do, and uh, <laughs> taking kids shopping, not my favorite thing to do. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> But especially my son, who right now is going through a really picky phase, um, it's asking him like, well, what would, what vegetable would you like to try? Um, you know, and it's, so we're in sprouts and there's, you know, obviously dozens of different kinds of vegetables and I'm always surprised at what he picks. Um, so he was the one who picked Brussels sprouts and, you know, and so I used a preparation method I already knew he liked with green beans. They love like lemon pepper green beans. And so I did that with the Brussels sprouts and he loved the Brussels sprouts. Um, but it was really eye opening to me of how much like letting go of control means 
that you get what you want in the end. Um, and my daughter's the same way. Like she would not eat anything that was not like that traditional pasta color. Um, but so I asked her one day if she wanted to help me make sweet potato gnocchi. She loved the process of making it. It was great one-on-one -on -one time. And at the end of the day, she ate the sweet potato gnocchi, even though she never would have eaten that color or anything before. Um, so, you know, and that's, that's part of making it fun. And, and, and it, it also helps you to establish these really great family memories too, um, which in the long term is really what it's all about. I mean, yes, we want our kids to eat food, but we also want them to have these happy memories of spending time with mom or dad in the kitchen. Yeah. We want to build good memories around the kitchen table and not eat your meatballs, take another bite. Why aren't you eating that? Like that's not the kind of family dynamic that we want to create at the table or in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, nobody really wants anybody crying at the table. That's, that's not the ultimate goal of meal times. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun for anybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and I think the last thing too, that we found is making it fun. Um, you know, so if you're trying like a new Latin meal, um, we'll turn on some Latin music and it's fun and we're dancing around and it just changes the energy in the room and it, and helps everyone kind of feel like this is something fun. And it's like, we're at a restaurant, but we're at home and like, oh, like maybe we can, you know, maybe we'll make it fancy and set out some China. And all of a sudden the, the whole feeling around the meal has really changed. Yeah. One of our favorite meals to eat is ramen. And because we tell them about like a little bit about the food culture, like, okay, so we're having ramen today and we're going to practice using chopsticks and everybody's having fun because we're, you know, we're trying to learn how to use chopsticks and we're making a mess and it's fun, but ramen is also fun because you can pick up the bowl and like slurp it and you're supposed <laughs> to make like loud, obnoxious noises and you get food everywhere. And it's a messy, fun meal and kids love it. So yeah, just making food fun and enjoying your time together instead of stressing about how many bites you took is really important. Yeah. Well, I think it just relieves the stress for everyone. It's it's feeling like it was successful, even if maybe it wasn't as successful as you wanted. Um, but success is all about baby steps. Um, and so, you know, if they take that first bite, it's a it's a win all around. And so you go for it. Okay, hey, well, we are so grateful that you came to join us today. We'll do this again, um, but we wanted to invite all of you that if you are really excited about maybe trying some new foods and exposing your kids to some new foods, we have the Family Global Eater Challenge that is starting October 1st. Um, we will stick a comment in with the link to sign up. Um, it will be here on Facebook. It's a five-week challenge. We are covering Asian, Latin American um, food, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, and then African food. Um, and this is a journey for our family as well. We don't cook a lot of African food, but we thought this would be a really fun opportunity to explore some really cool flavors um, that are out there, which are really awesome. Um, so Jenny, it's really easy and it's not going to take up a whole lot of time. We wanted it to be like baby steps. So we are starting with Asian food because we figure most people have been exposed to that at least a couple of times in their life. Um, and then we're going to kind of go walk you through easy recipes and tips and tricks to make it weeknight friendly, as well as how to get your children and the rest of your family to eat it and enjoy it. Um, we're going to give away lots of prizes too, which will be really fun. So it's just going to be an easy, fun, stress-free, easy, <laughs> really just yes. a fun challenge. Yeah, we want people to be successful in this. We don't want people to feel like, oh my gosh, I don't want to. <laughs> like, We're calling it a challenge, but it's not going to be a challenge. Yes. Um, so we really hope you all will join us, um, and we will talk with you all next time. Yes, thank you. Bye. Thanks, Jenny. Bye.